Hello YouTube. What I want to go over today is just uh, cooking systems really. What you're looking at here is a uh, hexamine cooker. Weighs nothing at all, little, little shell. The uh, hexamine fuel is stored in the cooker. What hexamine uh, blocks are is sort of fuel impregnated um, blocks really. And you can uh, light them with a, uh, uh, with a match or a lighter and they uh, ignite pretty, uh, pretty well. There we go. So that little block is uh, uh, sparking up a tree. I'll put another one next to it. What we're going to do is uh, get a saucepan, a, uh, a crusader cup, anything like that, fill it up with water, that goes on, and that's your uh, hexamine cooker. I carry this in my 72 hour bag. It's a great little uh, gadget. I've set it up with some bricks, but what you could do is just dig a small hole, set it in the hole so that your saucepan is at or about level with the ground, because then you've got uh, an instant uh, windshield. And uh, great little cooker, you know, uh, 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 personal issue for the British infantry for 40 or 50 years. It's uh, good as gold. If you haven't got any hexamine, what you can do is you can burn, um, use it as a hobo stove, you know, small, uh, start off with your kindling. Uh, light it as you uh, would uh, any kind of uh, small fire uh, and uh, it's good as gold. Hexamine cooker stove. Next thing uh, I've got in my kit is this uh, peak cooker. It's a uh, small petrol burner, very simply, and what this does is uh, uh, runs on uh, dual fuel, so uh, alcohol and uh, unleaded made by Coleman's, it's called a peak stove. What I've done is uh, a couple of minutes ago I put some water on. Let's just see how that's doing. You know, okay, so that's uh, that's definitely hot enough for a brew. Maybe just short of a rolling boil, but it's literally been on for sort of two or three minutes. And uh, it's a great little, uh, great little stove. I've had that one myself for maybe uh, 20 years. And uh, once in a blue moon, I take it apart, give it a good clean, put it all back together. It's been good as gold. So uh, there's a couple of little cookers. Let's go on to look at uh, something more long term. Okay, what we're looking at here is my uh, uh, same again. It's peak. It's Coleman's. It's dual fuel, so it's uh, unloaded petrol or uh, the Coleman's fuel, which is sort of alcohol based, really. And uh, it's been an absolutely great gadget. I mean, you could feed, you know. 10 people on that stove, no, no problems at all. Uh, it's pretty economical, uh, it's a twin burner stove. All you do is you pump the little cylinder to uh, generate pressure, that pumps the uh, fuel through. It's heated and turned into petrol vapor and that's what you cook on. Uh, it all shuts down, comes with its own windbreak. It's a great little cooker, but now we're talking about something pretty much uh, medium to long term. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of people from Hurricane Katrina still haven't gone home. You know, 19, 18, 1900 people killed. You know, so uh, to have something that you can absolutely rely on, you know, is I think it's a good idea. Thing that I love, as uh, anyone that's uh, watched the channel before knows, you know, this is my uh, potbelly stove, and uh, it's a giant hobo stove. You know, you, you burn wood in it. What I do is. Uh, uh, pack it so that uh, when I get that uh, stove out everything that you need is in it. Let's just open the door for you Okay, so what the tray in the bottom of the uh, uh, Burner already has uh, Some cotton wool balls in it already has uh, some wire wool a couple of uh, pine cones uh, So you can light it with your fire steel There's your first load of uh, timber that you're going to burn in differing thicknesses and in the top there, that little silver tray, is a few barbecue coals. But get that out and it's ready to kind of rock and roll. You know, you, up close you can probably see how I've made this, uh, this potbelly stove. It was a gas cylinder. I've literally just uh, drilled holes in the uh, bottom all the way around every uh, couple of inches. Uh, four holes into the cylinder and then just cut those through with a uh, hacksaw cut the top out, that's a baking tray, I just bought a baking tray, cut the hole the right size, put it in from the inside, 
half a dozen rivets and uh, that's the bake, that's the uh, top of the stove. Kept the handle on it, the handles off of an old paint tin. Uh, and uh, same again, just half a dozen holes, a drill to run a hacksaw around it, uh, a bit of steel and a couple of rivets that you can see there that hold that in place and the chimney is stored inside the uh, stove, so that's a pot belly stove. The other thing I've kind of laid my hands on is this uh, gas barbecue and uh, really cheap at a superstore, 15 pounds I guess uh, about uh, 20, uh, about 37, 38 dollars probably. Uh, gas cylinders are quite expensive but uh, I need to be able to uh, plan, you know, for for not being able to lay my hands on uh, certain fuels. So uh, the little hexamine cooker is a hobo stove. Then I've got my pot belly stove. They're my they're my cooking implements of choice, you know, because obviously they're just burning timber and it's not costing me anything. You know, then we're on to unleaded petrol and uh, the uh, Coleman's fuel, uh, or uh, if I can lay my hands on a gas cylinder. You know, then I then I can cook on the uh, gas barbie, and all I do is put a uh, um, put a sort of griddle plate on it, and then uh, just cook on it. Uh, you know, fry eggs, all that sort of stuff. Just use it as a kind of griddle plate. Meat, all the rest of it, straight on. So, uh, um, you know, I thought it was for the money was uh, worth grabbing hold of. So uh, there you go. That's my sort of cooking systems sort of thing. I think uh, most of us should be able to lay our hands on. The other thing that uh, I want to just say, and you know, it's just a sharing what I think is a good idea, is I've always got into a routine of boiling water before I go to sleep or uh, at dusk, and then putting it in a flask, just boiling water. So the boiling water just goes in the flask, and of course, when you get up in the morning, there's your brew straight away. You know, you're not having to uh, mess around trying to spark up uh, a, you know, a fire or a burner. You can literally just make yourself a nice warm brew in a flask so that's a really good uh, little gadget served me well i'm going to open up that gray box again for you that's my uh, larder pantry so uh, take the front off of that and just show you what's in there again okay there you go it's my pantry it's a self-contained uh, military freight box that i've just painted uh, gray and uh, it's very robust, I, I dare to suggest it's uh, almost indestructible, but there's enough food in there for five to seven days for myself, plus you know, all the run of the mills, the uh, washing up liquid, toilet paper, all the sort of incidentals. If you do get a bit of company, you know, somewhere along the line, there's half a dozen plates and cups in the bottom. So uh, you could probably cater for half a dozen people, I think, without too much trouble, or failing that, there's probably enough food there for myself for, easily five to seven days let me show you how the front goes back on okay front just uh, goes back on it, it drops into a uh, recess at the bottom a couple of clips at the left and right top corners locks in place uh, good as gold it's not watertight but it's a very sturdy thing and um, you know highly unlikely anything in there is going to get damaged uh, great little bit of kit uh, that's it really burners cookers stoves you know, get yourself a combination of two or three things so that you're not relying on one fuel source. Uh, today's good idea. Thanks, YouTube. Any comments? Love to hear them.